situation in southern Sudan presents a problem for everybody in East and the Central Africa. South Sudan peace process was poorly, badly arranged. That's point number one. The poor process that involved IGAD, the process of a peace process, the negotiations, the arrangement of agenda was badly done. South Sudan needed an overall United Nations supervision ambassadorial or an envoy to specifically sit down, iron out, bring out and exclude the root causes of a renewed attempts for people to subdivide the commanders, to pay commanders to rebel against others, and the new rebellion and the new mechanisms, I mean, new rebel groups that are being formed from neighboring countries under the auspices of those governments. I'm not going to keep quiet. I will say it as I know it. South Sudan at the moment needs the root of accountability. There is no peace that can grow in the world without accountability. The thousands and the thousands of South Sudanese who are in capitals across the world, some of them don't know where their parents are. They don't know who killed them, how they were killed, whether they are safe, whether they are alive. We have not identified that particular element. We have gone a wrong way in South Sudan by arranging political leadership, political peace. We have not arranged peace with a redemption strategy. <coughs> the leaders of South Sudan will understand. Dr. Riyak Maja is my mentor in terms of peace negotiation mediation, conflict resolution, is my mentor. President Salva Ki is a friend. But until we come back and see why the peace is elusive, why every time the president is crying that there is a new threat to his power, why people divide Riyak Maja's faction into several factions, who is doing this? What benefit are they trying to get out of this? They want to keep South Sudan fighting and fighting and fighting while they earn and earn and earn a living. When we are doing the peace process of Northern Uganda, the LRA versus the government of Republic of Uganda. Medium, believe me or not, we had very good, well set out agenda. And I want to thank President, the Vice President, the President, the President, the Vice, the, the Vice President of South Sudan, President Salva Ki, Dr. Yak Macha. They played a vital role in bringing peace in Northern Uganda. They must be thanked for what they have done for us. We must help them to achieve that peace. That peace that is tranquility that is in Uganda is a price South Sudan paid for the peace to be in Uganda. Therefore, if we don't speak out as leaders, as people, who are going to sunset. We are no longer children anymore. When I was doing the Uganda peace process in South Sudan in Juba in 2005, I was about 50 something. Now I am in 65, going onward. 
I have started the project. I have started the, the conflict resolution mechanisms. I have started the political science to the last ion on earth. Therefore, when I see a problem going on and on, the people want to bring peace, but peace cannot come. There must be people who are spoiling the peace. Where did this army called National Salvation Army, who funds this army in Central Equatorial? The generals are well known. They know where they sleep. They know where they draw their money. They know where they bank their money. Is somebody dismembering South Sudan for the sake of themselves? Who is dismembering South Sudan? The United Nations must take a stand. United Nations Security Council. We must go back to a drawing board. Ethiopia is in chaos. Somalia seems to be in more complication, bigger than what we call chaos. The center cannot hold anywhere in Mogadishu. The national broadcaster cannot broadcast the president's message. That's how bad the situation is. The revolution among us, the presidents in Somalia seem to be eating itself familiar. And therefore, it is very important for us to be very honest and to tell the world the truth that there cannot be peace in South Sudan unless the people of South Sudan themselves are directed in a, a proper, peaceful, constructive engagement of accountability. Without accountability, forget it. Forget it. You cannot have accountability missing in a peace agreement. When we are negotiating in the Uganda peace process, one of the chapters that we put forward with Dr. Yakmacha and myself, and I'm still here, he's still alive, watching me as I speak. It's accountability chapter. Agenda number five was accountability. The, main, the central point of accountability in the South Sudan peace process is lukewarm. Measures on how you can't bring <coughs> soldiers in a containment area without food, without uniforms, without salaries. The world is just making noise, telling South Sudan, oh, do this, do that, do that. But my medium, in actual sense, there is nothing South Sudan can do now. They don't have the money. They don't have the money. The little money that is got out of the production of the oil is taxed to a level that by the time the money comes with the conditions that are on the ground, it is swallowed into various small, acti uh, big activities. So they don't have the money. Why is the world not calling for a donor conference? Similar to the donor conferences that the United Nations calls for Afghanistan, for Iraq, for other areas. Why? Because are we black that we cannot be called a donor conference? I'm speaking as a Pan African today. If we are dead black, if we are being discriminated as Africans, that a donor conference cannot be called for a country that has called it and called out and called out and called out and said we don't have the money. How are we going to attain peace, medium? Peace can be attained if there is enough funds to carry out the, the objectives of the peace process. That, man, that component in the South Sudan is missing. I hope you have been not, uh, noting down the components that are missing. The component of cash 
the containment of finances, the funding to make sure that you contain the soldiers in the same balance. The Minister of Defense is able to keep the soldiers paid salaries, food, accommodation, the betterment of their families. That component is missing. Therefore, the, the process will collapse. It will bring another war. Another point that is very crucial is accountability. The lack of accountability creates an uncertainty and it creates a lot of enmity among us, the soldiers. Nobody knows who is who, what happened. People have not come out to say the truth. There are people, I know of people whom I, I know are missing, whom I used to know in 2005, 6, 7, 8, when I was in South Sudan. They died, they were, they were killed. Accountability is very important. Another point is external forces. Who is funding the new rebel groups? Who funds the new rebel groups? Who is funding the group in Central Equatorial called the National Salvation Army or whatever you call it? Who funds them? Where are they getting the energy to disrupt the entire peace process? It's a point the UN Security Council, and the Kenya is a member of the United Nations Security Council. It's a point they must take on board. Because the insecurity in that region could spill over to my own country, where we have had peace for over 12 years since we signed the five agendas. I'm equally concerned. The other point that we need to note is the funding issue, which we have already talked about. The nasty point is forgiveness, reconciliation, restitution, reparation, the healing process. The healing process is, in, is connected to accountability, truth-telling, truth-telling. There are people who saw their friends come to kill their relatives and they survived. And if you bring them back and put them together without truth-telling, you are killing a country again. That has to come out to media. And those are some of the things why the peace is elusive. The lack of cash, the lack of accountability, the lack of redemption strategy, and the lack of United Nations decisiveness. United Nations has played hide and seek game on South Sudan. They don't want to call a donor conference. The country is bankrupt. It doesn't have the money. It has the people, but it has no money. And you cannot be telling them to have peace. The ego of the leadership, I'm honest. Dr. Riyak Maja is my friend. When they had imprisoned him in South Africa, I am one of those who shouted the loudest. They even called me a madman. Yes, the ambassador of South Sudan here in Kenya hated me because he said I'm Dr. Riyaka's person. No. I was saying you cannot lock a person in South Africa and you claim to do, be, do, do doing peace. It's rubbish. And I called it out. I put Dr. Riyaka on this, on this TV. It created me a lot of enemies. And I don't care. Because Dr. Riyak Macha is my senior. He's my friend, a mentor. And he, I like the way he mentored me into peace process. He brought peace in my own country. 
So I am not bothered whether you hate me or what. I'm not going to beg you. I don't care I will not beg the government of South Sudan for anything. If they don't want me to come there, there are East Africans who shall meet in other streets. But the truth is that the ego must be torn down. The leadership must turn it ego. But, okay, even if the leaders turn down the ego, Miriam, there is still a danger of external interference. There is still a danger of accountability. There is still a danger of no money. The, the country is bankrupt. From Yane Ukweli, they said the truth. And nobody is helping them. Instead, they are whipping them that they have peace, have peace. How do you have peace when you don't have the money to pay civil servants? How do you have peace when you don't have the money to run a government? How will you have peace when you cannot pay membership fee for African Union, for East African community? How will you have peace when your oil is taxed, heavily taxed? These are factors that we should sit down as academics, as scholars in the region, and I look at, instead of condemning Salva Kiri or condemning Riyaka Macha, you can condemn them until God, you reach heaven or hell, whatever, whichever direction you go, because there are so many ways that the people will go to, to, to either heaven or hell. Some will go as Muslims, some will go as, as pagans, some will go as Christians, some will go as Catholics, some will go as Muslim, Buddha, Buddhist, some will go, as, you know, there is Hindu, there are so many ways. You think there is only one way to go to God? But we must tell each other the truth. You cannot push South Sudan to peace when there, there is no money to pay for that peace. Let the United Nations bring money on board. Let them call if they have no money. Call a donor conference for the South Sudan.